This time on Pedalbox, we abandon our list of legal requirements for the IVA and do something slightly more frivolous because the rain is a bit of a problem today. So for the last few episodes, you've seen us going through this list, which is all the legal bits that we've had to do to make sure the car is allowed to go on UK highways. And all of this is like safety stuff, it's emission stuff, all that kind of thing, really important. Unfortunately, all the things on here that are left to do, we either need to order new parts or wait for parts to arrive or figure out what parts to order, or we need to be out on the car testing things, fitting things, and generally making the car right. Unfortunately, with the weather the way it is right now, although we had a good start this morning, we were able to make some, make some more progress on the dashboard, the rain is now bad enough that we can't really work out there. We can't get the welder out, we can't run power tools, all that sort of stuff. So we're coming back inside. And the only thing we really have to do in front of us with the garage here is either tidy it up or do something a little bit more frivolous. So what we're hoping, rather than do more tidying, because we're a bit bored of that, we're gonna dig through our big box of parts for the kit car here, among which is the audio loom that we've been building up so that we can put a, I don't wanna call it a sound system, that might be bigging it up a bit too much, but so that we can put something resembling a bit of music in the car to keep us entertained on those drives. So I'll just start digging through our box of gubbins. That's our old uh, intake filter holder that we probably need to redesign and reprint. There's our brake bias suggested that we're not actually allowed under UK road law. Uh, a boost pipe, can't remember where that one actually goes. We'll have to find where that lives and put it back in place. A couple of random bits of rubber seals, a side repeater that I took off to clean all the primer off of yesterday. One instrument cluster. Uh, box of assorted switches and interior lights that we're probably not using. And here it is, here is our audio looms. These are one pair of standard ISO connectors. We've got speaker outputs out of one, power outputs and everything in the other. So let's see if we can make this all work or get it ready to work on the car. So in my hands here I've got the wiring harness as we pulled it out of the TT and some random like OEM connector thing that we found just to hold it all together because these aren't actually attached anywhere further. So in one side we've got the speaker connection. It's quite convenient this only has two speaker outputs. I think they used to be like amplified or something in the original car, but it's perfect for us because we're only running two speakers. So we're gonna send these off to our speaker boxes. We might need to amplify it, so we'll probably splice these onto an amp if we have to go that road. But in either case, these are our left and right channels and that's good to go. On the other connector, we've got two, two wires that we've left in. Uh, this one I think is our switch live. That one's obviously a ground being brown. I think this one here is gonna be the permanent live. We need to splice onto that. We have got a wire in the car ready to attach, um, but it might be a bit interesting to you know, fit it onto there. There's three others that we've removed. We've got the uh, blue and gray here, which is usually like an amplifier trigger. So that will turn on a remote amp when the head unit comes on. The green and yellow here, I think is the uh, light. So it like dim, dims the backlight on the stereo when we turn the lights on. And there's a gray and white one, which I'm pretty sure in these cars is only ever used for K-Line. But quite why you'd want OBD diagnostics of your head unit is beyond me. So maybe that's something else, but it's probably K-Line. Now you might be a little bit surprised to see a 6x9 in my hand here, given how full the car is already. Especially one as chunky as a few year old Vibe Black Hex 9, which is a monstrous 450 watt peak, 150 watt RMS beast of a speaker. Way more powerful than we'll be able to use or drive in our car. But there's one crucial thing. These speakers came to us for free from a different Adrian, the same guy who owned the GTO that, Adrian, that our Adrian's currently tidying up. And as we all know on this show, the part that's free is the part for me. So we've also got some fairly small 6x9 enclosures. These are the smallest ones we could find on the internet. These ones are made by Auto Leads. I think we found them on Amazon for basically zero money. And we're just going to drop these in exactly as you'd expect them to fit somewhere inside the car. So this is not a very big enclosure for this size of speaker. This is a very bassy 6x9, it can really dig down. And when you've got an enclosure this size, you are wasting a lot of that potential. Unfortunately, we're quite constrained on size. And thankfully, the rain happens to have eased up just a minute ago. So we can take you outside and show you where these are going in the car. And you'll pretty quickly see why we've gone for such a small cabinet. Good. Well, here's our enclosure. And um, here's the hole it has to fit through that's not a very large space for it to get through so we ordered the smallest enclosure we could 
not really having measured, but just hoping that the smallest one would work. And it only just fits through the gap there. Actually, if I let go of it, it stays in place as it's held by the sides. So that's really, really marginal. Thankfully, if it didn't fit, we did have an approach of last resort. We could have sent it up through the floor, which at the minute isn't really a huge problem because the floor is off the car. But obviously you can imagine having to pull the floor off the car to replace a speaker is kind of dumb and that would have sucked. So we're really glad that this does fit through from the cab in here. So that's gonna live in the very front corner up by the A-pillar and fire pretty much back toward the opening here that we just loaded it in through. And looking at it now, you'll probably see why we're not too concerned about the mismatch in the, between the enclosure and the speaker. The enclosure is quite small, so if we tried driving the speaker to full power, we might hurt it because the, the impedance of the air might overheat the coil because it's not able to move so freely as it should. And also it's going to cost us a lot of base. But with it being in there, there's so many panels around it that would probably just end up rattling like hell if we tried driving it hard anyway. We, we don't want to do that. And the acoustics here are kind of rubbish. So we, you know, losing a bit of audio quality is really not the end of the world. The important thing is we get some kind of audio. It's well out of the way that we'd normally be using for storage. And we keep all of our access to storage in the rest of this whole compartment in here. And thankfully, it's still not raining. So we're going to roll the welder out and start putting in some brackets to hold that enclosure in place. Well, as you can see, the rain has unfortunately returned. So we had to hustle a bit. We did manage to get the two brackets in to hold both of the speaker enclosures in those front pockets in the car. We haven't got the enclosures themselves fitted. We've lined them all up and made sure everything fits, but we're not going to actually screw them in because they're made of MDF. Every time you, you know, put a screw in, remove it, put it in, remove it, you kind of wear the material out. So we're trying to keep the number of cycles down on that. But we have test fitted. Everything goes together quite nicely. So while the rain carries on, we're probably going to wire the speakers into the enclosures, maybe put some wires on the enclosures themselves and get them ready. But that's about all we can really do for now. We'd also like to put some carpet inside there, just a bit more acoustic lining, a bit more acoustic treatment. And also because it is a pocket that we'll be using, it'll be nice for it to not be bare metal, you know, so we can put things in there without everything getting marked up. But that is going to have to wait for a future episode once we've put some glass in to keep the elements out a bit, because that is a very wet part of the car right now, because there's clear access for rain through the windscreen, through the front quarter lights, straight in there. So before we put any carpet in, we don't want to get in mushy and rotten and everything. We're just going to seal it up with some glass in another episode. And believe it or not, it is still the same day. We've got a nice blue sky now. So we're back outside, taking the opportunity while the weather's good to do some work outdoors on the car, not in the garage. And the next thing we're working on is a known bug with our suspension geometry and the wheel wells, which is when we've got some steering lock on, a certain amount, not full lock, just part lock, we get some minor contact between the outer corner of the tyre and our inner wheel arch. So if Aid, you could throw some steering angle on there. The outermost edge of the tyre here does actually very slightly rub on the inner wheel arch. So there's a two parts to the solution for this. One, if we secure it forward, that buys us a tiny, tiny gap. And then technically we're not in contact. But to buy ourselves some good safety margin, we're also gonna dish the panel, which basically just means beating the hell out of it with a hammer, to buy us a few extra millimeters so that the IVA man doesn't have any rope with which to hang us. Now we're gonna zip tie it on the side here because this piece is removable. These air curtains have to come off to get access to the headlights. And we don't want to be drilling out pop rivets every time we have to remove it. That would kind of suck. It's a lot easier to just like snip a zip tie and replace it. So we're going to zip tie on at the corner and then dish the panel. And that should buy us the room that we need. Yep. Why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? Well, for whatever reason, hammering it didn't work. We could get it well out of shape with a hammer, but it was always just spring back. So in the end, we took the bottle jack from the old Rathfinder episode, link in the corner, braced it against the lower suspension arm and just wound it out and deformed the, uh, deformed the panel quite a lot and then heated the area all around it with a blowtorch. And we're pretty sure that's uh, re-annealing it or de-stressing it in some sense. And it did eventually just take the new shape and it's now in a nice sort of curvature to, uh, to fit around the wheel. We've done the same on both sides. It went a bit better on the other side. We've got even more deformation in it, but we should have more than enough room in here now to clear around the wheel. So I'm gonna drop the car back on the floor. The suspension really ought to settle a bit more before we do this, because it is still quite high relative to where it's gonna eventually settle to. But if we throw some steering lock on now, I can actually fully fit my fingers in the gap in front of the tire there. So there's loads and loads of room here. So we should be quite safe. 
So unfortunately, we've had to skip ahead a few hours here. It's been drizzling a little bit on and off. Not enough to stop us working, but enough that we don't want to have the camera outside and filming. It's dried up a little bit now, which is why we're taking this chance to shoot the outro. So we've got the head unit loom is almost completely in the car. It's been uh, tied together in here nicely. We've managed to splice on our permanent live. It's all tied in, bundled up along here. The only thing that we haven't done yet is actually wiring in that switch live that we mentioned earlier. So we're going to do that again. We're just taking the chance now while it's dry to get a bit of video in. Um, so that's all looking pretty good. We've also built up the speaker boxes. We've put the, put the drivers in the enclosures. We've tested everything in the car, made sure it all fits. Uh, again, didn't film that because it's not really the most amazing content. You've all seen speakers going in boxes and you're just going to have to take our word that they fit because we're not actually keeping them in the car. Obviously, we're still working. There's still rain happening and everything. It's not a great environment for speaker cabinets to be in. So they're staying inside in a box in the garage, keeping them nice and warm and dry and free of vine filings. And with that, as far as we can work out now, we're pretty much done inside the dashboard, which means we can probably cover the whole thing over, get our padding and insulation and everything on and get all that together for real, rather than just like playing around with a bare sheet aluminium. Because everything else that we've got left to do here is just like plugging in the switches and that kind of stuff, which is really nice and easy. Now, you might be wondering why we're talking so much about finishing this wiring off when we still have an ECU to worry about. But the focus in summer was on getting the engine running. Obviously, that didn't happen. And the focus now is with winter coming in, with the rain getting worse, is on trying to weatherproof all of this some. So we want to get some glass on. We want to get the windscreen and quarter lights in. That's getting really quite important because every winter, this wiring all gets messed up with rust. All of, the, all of this really just becomes a horrible nightmare. And especially now that we've got these air hoses in, if they get wet and stay wet for a while, they could well fall apart and rot from the inside out. So we really want to try and protect all of this stuff. So the ECU is taking a back seat. We're going to try and finish this up, seal it all up. And once we're done, that means we don't need access through here anymore and we can get the glass in. Well, stay tuned for next time because on the next episode, we're hoping to get that windscreen in, as I said, get the dashboard covered up. And hopefully once that's done, the view that we'll be able to give you of the car from down the driveway, looking at the front end of it is going to look absolutely brilliant. So that should be an amazing episode to tune in for. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the, ring the notification bell to make sure you get notified of when it's coming out. You can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show to support us from as little as a dollar a month. And do remember, every Patreon member gets a discount at our merch store at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy the long sleeve t-shirts like I'm currently wearing to stay warm underneath my jumper in the winter. You can also buy a beanie hat that I failed to catch that'll keep your head nice and warm in the winter, which you'll definitely need. And that pretty much wraps us up for this episode. So do remember, like the video if you liked it, like it if you didn't like it, comment down below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.